Bass boat driving is a lot of fun, especially when you're going really fast and especially when you know what you're doing. So I'm gonna try to explain to you right now in this video what you need to do to be able to go very fast in a bass boat. This is not condemning or, or saying that you need to go fast, but I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you eliminate the chine walk? How do you drive a bass boat going really fast? So I'm gonna try to explain all of that to you in this video right now. So let's, let's get going. Okay, we've done all the videos on the basic stuff. We did Bass Boat Driving 101, we did the basics, we did the turns, getting on plane, all that stuff has been covered. You can check out the other videos, check out them other videos if you want to uh, look at that stuff. But for this one right now, we're just going to get to, you've already gotten on plane, you've already, um, you know, going, going in the direction you want to go, and now you want to trim down for what? You know what I mean? I call it skint back. You want to get it skint back in that, in that boat you got, whatever it is. Yeah, I've got a Bass Cat Era, very fast boat. Not the fastest, but it's one of the faster ones. And it doesn't matter what brand you have. I mean, uh, most all of them, all of the major bass boats, when you get to that 20 foot range and you're talking, you know, at least a 200 horsepower, you know, I got a two, 250 uh, Mercury on the back of here, the new four stroke, uh, whether you, whatever brand you have, a lot of these principles are going to be the same. So you're, you're up, you got it skint back and we've covered, you trim all the way down when you're getting on plane, but as you go faster, you need to pull more of that hull out of the water that causes less resistance and, and you gain more speed. That's the whole trick. You want to try to get as much of the hull out of the water as you can in order to reduce the resistance and then that will allow whatever horsepower engine you have to be able to put more horsepower into, uh, you know, into getting and going. Uh, so there's a couple, couple dynamics that we need to talk about. Uh, one is that trim down. We go to trimming up and what happens is the, the front of the boat starts to lift. There's a point of diminishing returns on trim. Uh, so your trim is going to go up, going to go up, and then it's going to help lift the bow of your boat. And as it, as it lifts the bow of your boat, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to get air, more air under all that surface area of your hull. So as you get more air under the hull, it helps lift the front of your boat up. So, so that the motor does not have to do all of the lifting. You get more, the more air you get under there, the more it's gonna lift, the more uh, hull you get out of the water, the faster you're gonna go. So you get, that, you get that principle, that's going up, you're trimming up, you don't wanna trim too much. Um, depending on your motor height, now we have another uh, video on jack plates, uh, which, which I'll cover all the jack plate stuff, but if you've got your jack plate setting remotely close, you're going to trim your, your motor up until your rooster tail is approximately the same height as your motor. If you've got a rooster tail that's 30, 40 feet up in the air, you've over trimmed. You, you've hit that, that point of diminishing returns to where you've over trimmed and now you're losing power uh, you're gonna, and you're going to lose speed. So you've got that power, that, that motor trimmed too high, you get it back down to where the, the rooster tail is in that right uh, vicinity then you're going to be booking it and as you, as you start picking up speed and as you start picking up speed the problem i see a lot of people do and this is what most people want the help with is driving through that chine walk or chin walk chine walk walking there's a there's a hundred different names for it but what happens is the motor the the hull of the boat gets lifted and a lot of it has to do with you get so much air under the front of the boat you've got a lot of lift under the front of the boat and, and it starts to want to wander on you. And as, that, as it wants to wander, th th it'll start to dip back and forth. And once it dips back and forth, uh, you're gonna reduce the energy that you need to go forward. You need all of that energy 
in the motor in the boat to be going forward. Every time it starts to dip, you start the the motor starts move or the boat starts moving back and forth. You start losing energy, losing speed, and you can lose control really quick. Uh, in a bass boat, when you get up above 70 miles an hour, things happen in a hurry. Up above 80, things happen really really fast. Up above 90. I don't know, somebody else can tell me what happens when you get over 90 because I don't even want to be there. So uh, when you get to going really fast, you don't want to, uh, uh, you, you know, you want to make sure that you have the, the boat under control. And the easiest thing to try to explain to you before we get going is as you're, as you're running, when you feel that boat start to dip left, you're going to just gently, gently turn right uh, in, in, with the steering wheel. And basically, it's, it's almost like the principle of the waiter carrying a tray full of uh, glasses on there. Uh, you've got one hand under the middle of that big tray, and as it starts to dip, what do, you, what do they do? They don't keep going that way. They want to go in a straight line, so they, they, they push on that other side to bring it back. And as it, they just want to keep it balanced. You want to keep the front of that boat, as you're looking forward, you want to keep the front of that boat balanced just like a waiter holding that tray of glasses or, or plates or whatever it is, you wanna keep that balance. So as that boat starts to dip a little left, you're gonna pull it back right. As it starts to dip right, you're gonna pull it back a little left and you're just gonna make little teeny movements just like this right here to try to keep that front balanced. And you've gotta start doing it. You've gotta start doing that little, the little working deal as soon as you feel one side or the other start to dip. That is, that is a big, big key. As soon as you see it, feel it start to dip one side or the other, that's when you need to start uh, moving the, the, uh, the wheel back and forth a little bit. And I'll give you one other tip. When you feel it start to, start to walk like that, take your trim and bump it down two times, just like this. Just two, two little bumps. A lot of times that will help stabilize. It brings the hole back down into the water just a little bit keeps that energy going straight and it doesn't make the boat so loose and wild uh, when it starts to walk like that. And this is something that you're just going to have to get used to the feeling of. Uh, you, you're not going to just immediately understand this and get it. You, it's going to take time to, to feel this boat, to understand when it's starting to get a little loose. You want to bump that trim down just a little bit. And it, even if it's still a little wild, you might bump it down two more times. Just bump, bump, just like that, two more times, bump it down, and then you should be able to drive it. I've seen people, and I've been with people, they leave it over trimmed too long, and then you can't drive through that, that amount of uh, uh, you know, wildness. You just can't, you can't drive through it. You have to get your trim at the proper angle, angle then you can definitely drive through it. And once you, once you understand the feeling of driving through that chine walk, you, you won't even think about it. You know, I, I drive this boat, you know, 75 miles an hour going, you know, for an hour at a time. I don't even think about moving the wheel. I'm just moving, moving, moving like this. It not, not even a big deal. Um, you know, I really like the turnstile um, trim right here on the steering wheel. And I like having the hot TH Marine hot foot. That is a big, a big deal. So I can keep both of my hands on the steering wheel, work the trim, work the throttle don't have to take either hand off the off the wheel and, and that's to me the safest so let's get going and show you some of this fast-paced action so we're all the way trimmed down we're going to go ahead and get her on plane and you always want to take your hat and hold it like this so you can still have both hands on the wheel. You don't want to have to hold your hat like this and drive with one hand. Not good. Either put your hat away, put your hat on the throttle, or hold it like this. That's what I do. Get up the speed up and start trimming up.
Okay, so there it was. We're running in the mid 70s right there, very much under control uh, for me and, and my experience level. Um, you know, one more thing, you always want to have your uh, kill switch lanyard attached and you want to have your PFD all the way zipped up. I always keep the, at least the bottom, uh, the bottom clamp zipped. If you want to be extra cautious, you can, you can go ahead and clip the other, other ones, but definitely have a life jacket that fits. That's uh, of utmost importance. If something happens and you hit some floating debris or something and, and you get thrown out of the boat, uh, I, I've, I've seen it happen. I've had it happen when I was, uh, you know, water skiing and stuff. I mean, even 40 miles an hour, you can have your life jacket zipped right off uh, of you if it does not fit properly. So make sure you have a life jacket that fits properly. But when you're running, you got a couple things. Like we got some boat wakes hitting us right now. Uh, boat wakes are, are a big deal when you're, when you're running top speed. It, a lot of it depends on how big the boat wakes are. If the boat wakes are, are like these ones you can, you can probably see over here, minimal, a foot or less. Uh, you can drive through, with most bass boats, you can drive through that at top speed. I would recommend two things. Trim down just a touch. Don't over trim because if you get too much hole in the water, your, your front's going to get pulled around. You just want to, you know, you're, you're at at, at full throttle trim level, you just want to bring it down just a little bit, maybe three or four bumps, and it, it's going to bring that nose down in the water, and you can navigate those um, those wakes no matter what direction they are, as long as they're small, less than a foot. You get to the intermediate size, uh, let's say you know two foot, you know up to so two, one to two feet of wakes, you know like a wakeboard may make or something like that. In, in a bass boat at top speed, you are fine to hit those wakes as long as you're you're perpendicular you know those wakes are this way you're running this way you run across them you're not going to have any issues at all um, if you if you're running to where those wakes are are uh, you know at an at an angle uh, that's when you can run into some issues with those this kind of intermediate size wakes uh, you, you may just want to back off the throttle a little bit uh, don't over trim down just back off the throttle a little bit and and remember those principles of keeping that that front of the boat level uh, you drive right through them and then once you're through them you can get back on the throttle look you know nothing is more important than being safe but then when you get to those bigger wakes everything just tends to be amplified you've got those three four you know you got those big party cruisers running around the, you're just going to have to trim down substantially there you're going to have to trim down a good bit um, especially if they're at an angle if they if you hit them perpendicular trim down a little bit and, uh, and, and you know, slow down, you're gonna have to slow down off the of top end. You're not gonna be able to run top end through those, uh, not safely, uh, and then you can run through them and then get back on the throttle. Uh, so that's just kind of my, my little wake uh, addendum to this, uh, to this video to make sure the boat wakes. Uh, it's something that you have to pay attention to unbelievably. Uh, when, when you're running top end fast, like I was saying earlier, things can happen really, really quickly. You, you have to pay attention to every minute detail that's in front of you and, and way out there in front of you, uh, along with the other boats and, and the wind direction and all that kind of stuff. It, it can be, it can be um, you know, a lot to, I mean, you have to be completely focused. You, you can't just be uh, you know, putting it in, in cruise control, so to speak. You have to be very much paying attention to exactly what you're seeing, uh, floating debris, boat wakes, um, you know, any, you know, other boats, you know, in your periphery or, or in the distance, either one, uh, a lot of stuff to be thinking about when you're running top end. Uh, be very safe. Remember those principles about keeping the front of that boat balanced with your wheel. You can do it. Uh, remember what those tips are about the trim. Uh, and I bet you, you'll have your bass boat running near peak performance in no time. And by all means, have fun and be safe out there on the water. Thank you.